So you wait, you wait some more. And finally the doctor comes in. And I don't understand why the nurse asked you all those questions, because he asked you the exact same thing. Why are you here today, Mr. Page? What's going on? Tell him the story all over again. Well, I went to the doctors and I had these, I won't go into the story detail, but I had these, these spots on my body. It didn't look too attractive. <laughs> And I knew, because two weeks earlier, my five-year-old granddaughter had the same looking spots on her, and what her diagnosis was, that I probably had what she had. So I told the doctor, I think I have MRSA. MRSA is a bacterial infection that you get in your skin, and it causes these sores and these lesions. Have some. Have what she has. He goes, I want to treat it. I want to treat these spots. I don't want to treat the Mercer per se. I want to treat these spots and see if, if your immune system will overcome the Mercer and you won't get any more of these spots. He says, I'm going to give you an, an antibiotic cream just to put on these spots. I said, uh, that's not how they treated my granddaughter. They put her on a very high dose of antibiotic. And she good. Said, how about you give me the cream that you want me to use and in a couple days if that's not working, you give me the, the antibiotic now and then I will have them so if the cream doesn't work. Just write me a prescription for the antibiotic. And, and if the cream doesn't work, I'll... Took the antibiotic. <laughs> I healed up. I'm doing well. But he wanted to treat the symptom, not the disease. We need to realize illness. Not keep trying to drive down, suppress and hide and symptoms at bay. Go right to the root. Where does sin come from? A message entitled, Is God's Grace Enough for My Failure? Genesis 3, 1 through 5. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, did God actually say, you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden. Neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will, you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Do you realize that this first act of sin, this act, yes, this act of failure happened in a very sterile environment? Adam and Eve could not blame their failure on previous generations. They were made by God and they were made in God's image. They had each other. They were a social people. And they needed each other to hold each other accountable. Adam had a productive meaning in life. He was to cultivate the garden, tend to the animals. No excuse. No excuses. My father was that way, so Adam saying that, my father was My mother was always angry, so that's the way I deal with things when things come up in my life. No, Adam and Eve were the first generation. All the cards were stacked in their favor. Imagine what the world would be like today had they not failed. No death, 
No working hard for food, just gathering off the trees as they came into ripeness. Ease of childbirth, ladies. I know the, from experiencing being in the delivery room that the birth of children can be painful and laborious. It wasn't very pleasant for my wife giving birth to children. He was a long labor person. We went to the hospital and Hospital was in Plymouth, Mass., which was an hour away. We went into labor. I hospital. Come till they were three or four minutes apart. I live an hour away, and that's if traffic's good. If traffic's bad coming off the Cape, you can be three hours going that distance sent us home. We got home and our contractions got quicker, shorter. Back to the hospital. But she was in labor for 20 hours. Painful, long, laborious. An act of this first. Adam and Eve would have been a hero for protecting the family name by setting an example to follow. But their failure became the root that affected us all. Their choice, that one foolish choice, and the ongoing effects of that choice lead us to two questions. What is failure? And why do we still? We need to have the right answers to these two questions if we hope to treat the illness and not the symptom. Genesis 3, 6 through 10. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave some to her husband who was with her. He ate. When the eyes of both were opened and they knew that they were naked, and they, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves naked. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid. Consequences of sin, our broken relationship with God, others and creation. Our relationship with God is broken when we fail, when we choose sin because of what we were created to do was to bring honor and glory, have a close walk with God. When we choose sin over God, that separates us from that closeness with God. We dishonor God, not allow Him to rule Him. Our relationship with others is broke because we see each other's nakedness. Before the fall, Adam and Eve had no shame. They became fair of their sin. Afraid. Was a rich person from Bar Harbor down on the island asked you to care for their estate. You'd want to carry out their request with great care, wouldn't you? You'd also know that all that you were caring for didn't belong to you, but belonged to them. It puts you in the realm of being responsible to them for doing things the way they want. Suppose you. <laughs> They asked you to get the lawn ready. Clean things up. 
told you when they were coming. They came and you hadn't put the lawn furniture up, hadn't cleaned the branches from it, rearranged their flowers in their flower bed because you thought you thought it would look better. Why did you do this? Well, we just... God is very clear. But I have a choice to make whether we'll follow him. Adam was to care for the garden. The trees and the animals, he was given explicit instructions. He could discuss the work with God that he walked with in the garden. A wife and a companion hold each other accountable. Genesis 3, 11 through 19. He said, who told you you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? And the man said, the woman who you gave me to be with me, she gave me the fruit of the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? And the woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. And the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the fields. On your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I mean, between your offspring and her offspring, he shall bruise your head. And you shall... To the woman, he said, I, I will surely multiply your pain in childbirth. Pain you shall bring forth. Desire shall be contrary to your husband. He shall rule over you. And to Adam, he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree, which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat till you turn to the ground, till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, for you are dust, and dust you shall. There are three basic reasons why we choose to sin, why we fail, over doing what we know is right, being obedient to God. Now, by our nature, our fallen nature, we choose to turn away from God. The Bible is specific in warning, in warning us what these three main temptations are as to why we fail. 1 John 2, 15 and 16. Do not love the world or the things in the world. Anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, desires of the flesh, desires of the eyes, pride of life, not from the Father. Desire of the flesh. God gave Adam a wife. This relationship divine, defines the prescribed limits of sexual conduct and shall fulfill the cravings of our sensual desire man and a woman becoming one flesh and, and being satisfied with all that God has given to us in that relationship as husband, husbands and wives. But we think there must be more. I must be missing something. And anyway, everyone's doing it. Give in to the temptation. If you don't think there's a price for desires of the flesh, just read the stories of Samson. Read the stories of David and see what it costs them. Desires of the eyes. The biblical term is covetousness. It drives our sales industries these days. Advertisements that promise brighter, whiter teeth. That you feel so much better if you only own this product. You will live longer and healthier if you only take this pill. Your neighbors, they have a big house, so you should have a house. They have a boat, so you should have a boat. And the list goes on and on. Because somebody else has something, you should have something. 
of it. Adam and Eve had the whole garden. All the trees to eat from. Instead of being satisfied with what God said, here, have this. It is good. And I give it to you. Free gift. Satan said to Eve, For God knows when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. For when, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, saw that the tree was good for food, and it was a delight to the eyes. The desires of the eyes is a powerful temptation. Look at that. I only had that. I'd be so much happier. We must be aware of that temptation and the power of it. We're not going to fail in these temptations. The third one, and not the least by any stretch of the imagination, is the pride of life. Self exaltation. Instead of obeying God, we want to be our own God. Adam chose to eat of the forbidden fruit precisely because he wanted to be his own God. What did Satan whisper to him? And you will be like God. Pride is the act of saying, I know better than God. I can do it better than he could do it. I can do it without him. Pride blinds us to the needs of others, where God wants us to be his glory to the world. We are so consumed with ourselves that we have no time. Bravest of consequences, often, we don't have the time for him. The ones that God has given us responsibility. Pride gets in the way and we let those relationships slip into hurtful areas. If not tended to, can become hateful. 3, 20 through 24. The man called his wife's name. He was mother of all living. And the Lord God made for Adam, for his wife, garments of clothed them. Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like, like one of us, and good in him. Now at least he reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God to work the ground from which he was taken. He drove him out and drove out the man east of the garden and placed the cherub, the flaming sword that turned every way to guard the way to the tree. There is a price to be paid for our failure. Yeah. We become afraid of God and hide. Thorns will infest the ground. Work will become hard. Pain in childbirth. Strife between our lives. These are all areas of consequence. Because of failure, our failure, failure of Adam and Eve, what causes us to continue to choose sin, failure, over the truth, success? What makes a man come to the end of his life and admit, I lived a life that was worth nothing? If only I could go back, change the way that I live. Specifically, pride, covetousness, or sensitivity. Spiritual and moral failures often permanently affect our children, our friends, and our friends. These crushing experiences. Now I must take a moment to clarify that there is failure without sin. 
you bomb on a test in school, or you set a goal which is beyond your ability. These are all ways that God gets our attention. He often uses those failures to remind us of how desperately we need him. Not all is lost. Just as God provided clothes for Adam and Eve's nakedness and provided them a place outside of the garden to have children, God provided a remedy for our ugly. He has the wisdom to take our messes and straighten them out. No one has ever failed too greatly or too often for God. He had us sinners, or sinners like us, in mind when he initiated his redemptive plan. Long before Adam and Eve were created, God planned to turn our failure into his. Only a God who knows all things and who has infinite wisdom could draft a plan that would anticipate virtually every situation, every failure, every sin. God has done that for you. The way of the cross of God intends us to change our basic world. Become a new creation. Become that person that he calls us to be. To lean in, like we talked about last week, Blair leaning into Ben's legs, his father. He wants every one of us to lean into him that way. Know him through that relationship. In that way, that we lean into him and we trust him to take care of us. We need not to be controlled by pride. We need not to be driven by desire. Not to give in. Christ's death did not. Forgiveness also. Also is the door. The life free of persons finds us like pain. His failure is living with the lie. No better than him. You can do it without him. Is desiring what others have. Giving in to the desires of the flesh. Those are all. Okay. Allowing God to direct our days, direct our path. Is being satisfied with our work, understanding the concept, to become. Allowing that to satisfy our being motivated to serve God out of sheer gratitude for what he has done. It all starts by acknowledging our need of a savior. Accepting his forgiveness. Please, if you've never done this, if you've never acknowledged your need for a Savior or asked for his forgiveness, linger after the service. Come find me. I'd love to explore. Remember at the beginning of the service, I told you you were a failure. That's Romans 3.23. God in his infinite wisdom does not leave that statement unchecked. We are all sinners. We all fall short. But 324 reads like this. All have sinned and fall short of God, justified, and are justified just as if by His grace. Gift, free gift, justified by His grace. through the redemption.
No more. I quit. I've had enough. I wasn't made for this. All the lies I've tried. Purple me. Doubt. I think it's time to say goodbye. I know who I am now. Part of me says, I want to walk away. Before I leave, I think I need to call you out by name. Goodbye regret. Goodbye alone. Goodbye emptiness. Goodbye afraid, goodbye ashamed. Can you hear it? The sound of me walking out of this prison cell that I've come to know so well. I used to play the victim singing, take these chains from me. Long been broken. I was free would not leave. Somehow I get comfortable locked up here. That I missed that the doors were already open wide. Or like ripped off the hinges. Goodbye regret, goodbye alone, goodbye to emptiness. Hello beautiful. Goodbye afraid, goodbye ashamed. Goodbye hopelessness. Hello beautiful. Before I go, just so you know, there will come days again, wrestling not to believe. Things you say I am. When I've forgotten what's inside and who I'm meant to be, I remember what's inside is not. Goodbye regret, goodbye alone, goodbye emptiness. Hello beautiful. I afraid. Say goodbye to those things. Say goodbye to those things that keep us separated. Grace of God. Here today. Clear understanding of what you provided. The blood of Christ was shed for the remissions of sin, for the remissions of our failures, for the forgiveness of the ugliest of things. There is not one ugly enough. That you desire a relationship with them all, a restored relationship where we can walk daily close with you. You will direct us. And provide all that we need. Praise you for the way that you have worked in our lives. The way that you continue to work in our lives. Closing hymn today. 344 if you're looking in a hymnal. And as we see. 344.